Good evening, everybody. Hi. My name is Betty Siegel. I'm the director of VSA and Accessibility here at the Kenny Center, and it is my honor and pleasure to welcome you to the Millennium Stage up in our, our new little space to use as a Millennium Stage. This is a free performance that we bring to you every night from 6 to 7, and it's also brought to you by Target. We're here at 6 each night of the week, 365 days a year, to bring you the best in music, dance, theater, and more. If you are unable to join us you can, in person, you can always visit us online at kennedy-center.org where we broadcast each night's performance live as well as make past performances available in our broadcast archives. Now tonight's show is um, really fabulous. Um, this is a company that I've wanted to bring here to the Kennedy Center for many years, and uh, this has uh, been a great opportunity for us to do this. Tonight's show is titled, More of Our Parts. Now, just as a reminder, this is six shows in 70 minutes, okay? Short plays about disability that were commissioned, especially for Theater Breaking Through Barriers. Theater Breaking Through Barriers is an off-Broadway company dedicated to advancing actors and writers with disabilities. And tonight's performance is a celebration of the 22nd anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act. Yeah. The performance is being presented by the John F. Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts, the Rosemary Kennedy Education Fund for Artists on Stage, and the Kennedy Center's Office of VSA and Accessibility. So now before we begin, and before I introduce you to someone very important, please note that this show does contain some adult language and mature themes. And silence your cell phones, you got that message, and no unwrapping candy or anything like that, right? Okay, I want to introduce you to a man that I've uh, actually known in some ways for many years, but I only just met him in person tonight, Ike. Thanks, Betty. Hi, uh, I'm the director of TBTB. I want to welcome you too, but I mostly want to tell you that one of the actors couldn't make it here uh, in the first play, so the role will be played by Bruce Graham, who is the playwright, which I think is really cool, but he has had one rehearsal. So, if you sometimes feel that he's looking at his script, he is. <laughs> I pass this on to somebody. It's great. Ah. Thanks. Just what I asked for. Good. I don't know how you do it. Hey, it's my job. But you do it with a gun to your head. I wanted you on this project first. Uh, you know I that, know. right? But the suits, right? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, yeah. Every time, Ooh. the same thing. It never failed. Develop these things for years. You get on location, and bang, this doesn't work. This is missing. Stars, blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm saying. And then you come in and save all our asses. You've been a good soldier, Jar, and I appreciate it. Thanks. Maybe I shouldn't use the word soldier. I don't want to demean our military personnel. Okay. It's funny. It's charming. It's romantic. Peach. You believe this? So many rewrites were down to peach. It's warm. It's real. But, come on, Robert, whenever you list adjectives, there is always a but. Charming, romantic, warm, but. It's a tone thing. OK. She's nude. <laughs> Since when is nudity a tone thing? OK, maybe tone's not the right word. Um, maybe a more appropriate word would be? Nudity. Yeah, that works. Jerry. She's nude. Right. So is he. From the waist up, who cares about him? We're talking about Michelle being topless here. Right, they just had sex. I realize that, but you've got in the script there, they languish against the headboard. He playfully runs his finger along her breasts. Right. So we'd have to see her breasts. <gasps> right. 
Couldn't she pull the sheet up? Nobody does that. Sure they do. Yeah, in the movies. Doris Day, maybe. <laughs> Come on, Robert, when have you ever seen a woman in real life hold a sheet up against her breasts in bed? Maybe it's cold. Now, there's nothing vulgar about this scene, Robert. It's just not what I expected, okay? What were you expecting? No, you asked for a funny, romantic, sexy scene to relax the audience before the bad guy came back. Sexy, not sex. And this dialogue. What about it? No, she's explaining how deaf... Hearing impaired. ...people communicate about sex. It's not smutty, it's sexual sign language. All right, let me get this straight. This is the sign for orgasm? <laughs> right. Ah, oh, come on. It's in the research you gave me. Really? What did Marty say about it? Uh, who cares what Marty said? That means he liked it. Jerry, I like it. I do. I just don't think the audience is going to be comfortable with what? Seeing Michelle, topless, discussing sex in sign language. It's what a deaf woman would do. Hearing impaired, Jerry, please. Now, <laughs> if this was Julia Roberts playing a hearing impaired woman, that'd be different. But Michelle really is deaf. Stop saying deaf. What if she heard you? <laughs> I, I'm not following you here, Robert. We are in the audience business here, Jerry. You can never forget the audience. And I really don't think the audience is going to be comfortable with this scene as it is. Are, are you saying that handicapped people... Differently abled. Handicapped people don't have sex? Of course they do. We just don't want to know about it. <laughs> Why wouldn't we want to know that handicapped people... Please, don't say handicapped. Why, it's what they call the parking. <laughs> Indulge me, okay? Okay. Um, Daniel Day-Lewis... In my left foot, it would be okay to show him having sex because in real life, he's not handicapped. Exactly. Well, that's crazy. No, not really. The point is here, Jerry, that unlike a lot of people in our business, I know the history. Some of these people, they don't even know who Buster Keaton was. I know the history of our business. Harold Russell, best years of our lives. The GI who had his hands blown off. He wore the, uh, you know, uh, hooks, prosthetics. Would you want to see him having sex? Robert, it was the 40s. Nobody had sex in the movies. Would you like to see Harold Russell uh, having okay, sex? Okay, no. Exactly. Because those hooks can really hurt you. <laughs> Hattie McDaniel. What about her? Would, would you have wanted to see Hattie McDaniel having sex? You know who I mean, no, right? I know who Hattie, Mammy and Gone with I the I know Wind. who Hattie McDaniel was, and she wasn't differently able. She was black. Why do you have to bring race into this? <laughs> Wait, what are you talking about? She had a wooden leg. <laughs> no, she didn't. Oh, I think she did, Jack. Now, would you want to see a woman with a wooden leg having sex? She was 300 pounds. I don't want to see her having sex in any circumstance. <laughs> That's my point. You would be uncomfortable watching the differently sized people have sex. Hattie McDaniel did not have a wooden leg. <sighs> okay. The miracle worker, right? Big hit, two Oscars. Right, there's no sex in The Miracle Worker. Exactly. <laughs> you don't see Helen Keller running around topless signing about sex. She was 10 years old. <laughs> well, there you are. We don't want to see the differently aged having sex either. Robert, the picture's already rated R. You've got the brief nudity with the strippers. Uh, who are not differently able? You were right. Hattie McDaniel did not have a wooden leg. I Googled it. Listen, Robert, I think seeing Michelle topless is, quite frankly, box office. You do? Yeah, she's got great tits. How would you know? At dinner the other night, I was looking down her blouse. <laughs> Me too. They're great. Oh, I agree. So? <laughs> Jerry, the quality of the tits was never in question here. It's, it's the fact that she's deaf. Will you stop? No, I'm not going to stop saying deaf. There's nothing degrading about the word deaf. Michelle refers to herself as a deaf woman. That could be her call No, she's very well adjusted about you it. You don't know that. She jokes about it. Defense mechanism. It won't work, Jerry. Put yourself in the audience. What are they thinking? I'll tell you what they're thinking. Oh, my God. They might have a hearing-impaired baby. Is that the note we want to send them out on? Do you even hear what you're saying? Of course I do. I'm not deaf. I'm just saying that a 
a hearing impaired woman, hearing impaired in real life, that is, is not someone the audience wants to see having sex. Why not? It's uncomfortable. Why? Her tits aren't impaired. <laughs> Forgive me for saying this, but that's just a tad sexist there, Jack. Let's get Marty in on this. Let's not. No, we should hear the studio's point of view. I'll tell you exactly their point of view. They agree with you. Really? They ran the numbers. They figure Michelle Topless will add 10 million to the opening weekend. Five mil a tit? Right. So what's your problem? The problem? I'll tell you what the problem is. It's wrong, Jar. Why is it wrong? I, I, let me finish, let me finish. Look, let's be honest. Yeah. The only reason this movie is getting made is because Michelle won the Oscar last year. Let's face it, we're talking a short shelf life here. How many roles are there for a hearing impaired woman? But at the moment, she's hot. And despite some really good rewriting on your part, we are not making Citizen Kane here, am I right? What we're making is an economic little thriller. Wait until dark with a hearing impaired woman instead of a seeing impaired woman. A nice little thriller. It is not a groundbreaking film when it comes to the differently able. I'm not following. If we show her tits, we're breaking new ground, forging new frontiers, opening floodgates for God knows what. I don't want to be a groundbreaker here, Jeff. Five mil a tit. Groundbreaking movies don't open big. Brokeback Mountain? That was a western. Jeff, please. <laughs> Do I want a big opening weekend? Absolutely, I need one. Then I can go make another documentary. <laughs> Which Republican are you going after now? No, seals. Seals? Baby seals. Why are you against baby seals? No, you know, it's a... Clubbing and everything, it's brutal. I thought they stopped that. No. Don't you think seals are a little retro? No. Seals are hot. Do you see what I mean? About seals? No, about how the differently abled are different. They're special. They arouse empathy. Empathy. We just want to cuddle them. And, and what if they don't want to be cuddled? Uh, Charles Dickens knew the score. Christmas Carol, brilliant. Kid on crutches at Christmas. Tell me you don't feel sympathy for Tiny Tim. Of course, but I that don't. That name's kind of dismissive, don't you think? Tiny? Diminutive Tim? Uh, come on, you know what I mean. These people, and I don't mean these people like some people mean those people, they touch something in all of us. They bring out the best in us. We feel protective of them. So we don't want to see them having sex. Bingo! If they have sex, then they're... Normal. Don't make it sound like that. I can't help it. We won't have the sympathy if we put this scene in. We're going to lose the ah factor. Fill me in. You know, the, the moment when the challenged person does something we take for granted. Tiny Tim walks. Harold Russell ties his shoes. Helen Keller sees. Robert, she never... And the audience goes, ah. You know, uh, Charlie, 1968, Cliff Robertson wins an Academy Award playing a mentally challenged man. And at the end of the picture, what's he doing? Stooping some woman with big tits? No! He's alone, gently petting his only friend, a mouse named Algernon. And the audience goes, ah. So it's perfectly acceptable for a mentally challenged man to stroke a rodent, but it's unacceptable for a very attractive hearing impaired woman to make love. Don't act like I created the situation. It's the audience, not me. And I gotta tell you, Jeff, quite frankly, I'm not sure I know how to direct it. Well, it's tough about it. It's in two shot. You just put the camera down. But... Michelle, I gotta take this. Hello, Michelle. Robert, you don't have to shout. She's reading off a screen. It's your day off. Why aren't you resting? And she can't read your lips. What's that? I'm sorry. What did you... Oh. Well, he, he's right here. I can't understand a word she says. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh. 
I didn't know you saw the new pages. The peach ones? How did you? Oh, Marty gave them to you. <laughs> oh, well, uh, that's, uh, that's good. Did you read it carefully? So you have no concerns about the, uh, good, good. Glad you, right, <laughs> a nice moment before the bad guy comes back. Get the audience all relaxed. <laughs> Great. Uh, okay, you, you get some rest. It's your day off. Right. Bye. <sighs> Marty. I heard. It, uh, and she. I know. She likes it. <laughs> she thinks it's charming. I'm not sure I agree with her. Blatantly showing impaired nudity. <laughs> I'll be as subtle as possible. Wish he wasn't doing that finger thing. I'll make it work. Maybe we can do something with the lighting. God, I wish her hair were longer. Well, looks like we're going to break some ground here. <laughs> See what I can cut. I don't want to try their patience. People out there paid mostly so they could see you. It's one of the selling points of the benefit. See the great man up oh, close. Fuck. They won't mind a few extra sentences. So it doesn't matter if I bore them. I won't bore them. Mm -hmm. You're awfully sure of that. Well, you don't bore me. You've just built up a tolerance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. Mm. So what part are you? What part are you afraid will bore? <laughs> Am I saying too many names? Well, depends on what you mean by too many. Oh, aren't you helpful? Well, look, the point is, the point you're making, they're in danger of being jailed, disappeared. Yeah, well, that is the point, but nobody's going to know who these people are. Do they have to? Okay. They know you know who these people are. Okay, nobody out front will probably have read any of them, their books, poems, but you're appearing here, your presence, mentioning them, vouches for their, their importance. Well, they should be important whether they're writers or not. Uh, well, that goes without saying. Does it? Uh, Maybe I should say it. You don't have time to write something new, and you're not at your best when you wing it. Okay. Speech is good, and it will help. Why are we waiting till May? talking about that now? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Let's talk about it's convenient for the most people. Oh, we should just get the license and do it. Forget the rabbi. Go to City Hall. What about the hall we've got booked in May? Well, everybody could still get together and party. But why do you want to push it up? <laughs> I don't see the point of waiting. We know what we want. Why should we put it all To include all other people. Other people want to be there. They want to witness and celebrate. Am I saying anything? And why should we give a shit? About what? Other people? <laughs> yes. Well, that's a fine quote from you. Why should we give a shit about other people? You can write it as an op-ed in the Times. <laughs> I'm not saying in general. To, I'm here to give a speech, you know. It's a speech about other about people. Other people. It's not like yes, I'm being paid or getting any particular advantage. You I'm don't have to wave your credentials at me. It's just I don't see the point of waiting till May. You're just afraid I'll change my mind if I have that much time. No, I'm afraid I won't have the energy to keep fooling you until then. <laughs> Sheila, 
won't be back from China until May. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I'm assuming you want your daughter there? Oh, yes. You can't do it without her there. Yeah, she'd kill me. And at her trial, I'd testify for the defense. I, 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 I'm still not sure about these names. And, but there, there must be a John around here somewhere. Ah, uh, over there to the left. Oh, all right, back in a second. Here, you, you take a look and see if you see anything. Yes, yes, go, go, go. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, yes? I was told Mr. Morris was here. Um, he's otherwise occupied at the moment. Should we wait? Was he expecting you? Not exactly. I'm not aware of him expecting anybody. Well, no, it's a surprise. Um, I'm wondering if you could tell me who you are and if you could step out into the hallway. I I'll see if he can see you. He's, um, he's, he's still working on a speech. If you could tell him Lewis is here. Lewis? Lewis. And you are? My name is Nell, but he won't know who I am. I'm just here to be helpful to Lewis. I'm Lewis. Oh, uh, uh. I'll, I'll tell him. I understand. We'll just wait out in the hallway. And if he can't see you now, he might be able to see you at the reception afterwards. Oh, we couldn't afford tickets for the reception. Oh, all right. Tell him, Lewis. Yes, I will. So you have your pen out. Oh. Well, you might be able to lose an adjective or two. Listen, someone was, someone was just here. Oh, who? I'm not sure. A woman and um, a shy-looking young man. Uh, they're out in the hallway. Her name is Nell, the woman. I don't think I know her now. No, she said that, but she said Lewis. Uh, that was his name. Lewis? Yes. Describe him. Uh, I just did. A shy looking young man. He said, I should tell you, Lewis. He said? Yes. And you're out in the hallway. I, I told them, I told them if you could see them. I, I said later, it might be better. No, no, I'd rather see them now. Well, should I tell them that, invite them in? Well, yeah, it's better to get it over with. Over with? I, 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 don't, I don't mean that, actually. I mean, invite them in. Are you going to tell me? My son, actually. You have a son. Invite them in. Huh. Lewis. Dad. Huh. This is a surprise. This is. Huh. Oh, you, you must be now. Yes. Uh, I gather you're connected to Lewis in some oh, way. Oh, uh, at the house. Oh, well, I don't remember meeting you. You must be new. Almost 18 months. <laughs> you mustn't have been there the last time I visited. If you had visited, I would have heard about it. Lewis would have told me. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm not great at keeping track of time. I run around so much. You know? You're a busy man. Um, Eli, uh, maybe you could. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, yes, of course. Uh, uh, Lewis, uh, someone I want you to meet. Annette Lewis. Lewis, this is Annette. We met. Oh. Annette is my fiance. Fiance? We're getting married. We're getting married? When? May. Married? Yes. You're marrying Dad? Yes. If you're a dad, then. I hope we'll be friends. Yeah, sure. I think we will be. For the visit? Yes. More? Yes. Lewis has a new job. A grocery. There's a grocery a block away from the house. Oh, that, that's great news. Yes. How do you like it? Oh, yeah, they're still out there. I talked to them. Oh, that's terrific. I, I had a job in a shop when I was a kid. A grocery? Uh, no, a stationery store. I sold uh, papers and books and pens and things. Carbon paper. Carbon paper? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> A long time ago, it's what we used to use before computers. I'll play the computer. Oh, yeah? Games. Oh, you're in kinds of games. <laughs> uh, 
Do you have your own? Has, does he have his own computer? There's a house computer. Oh, would it be okay if he had his own computer? I mean, any rules about that? Would you like your own computer? Yes. <laughs> what might make more sense? I mean, if you're thinking about getting a computer, mostly people in the house share house computers, and one of them died recently. You're referring to a computer. I'm sorry? A computer died, not one of the people in no. the house. Never mind. No, a computer died, not one of the people. Yes, I guess. No. <laughs> uh, but since everyone shares, if we need a second house computer, Oh, well, I, I think that's doable. We didn't come here to hit you up for a donation. Listen, I think it's important to have a computer. Huh? Maybe learn email. I mean, we, we could email. Oh, yes. Um, I email my girlfriend a lot. <laughs> Mac. <laughs> yeah, yes. That's the type of computer we're used to. Oh, yeah. So, yes, I, you know, I, I, I hear terrific things about them. Look, I, I'll be in touch, and you can tell me what's usable. Hmm? If you're sure. Oh, I'm sure. I tell if I, I wish I had known you were coming, we could have uh, arranged for a lunch beforehand. It was spur of the moment. I saw in the paper that you were speaking nearby today, and he's been talking a lot about you lately. Oh, uh, well, when we're staying over, perhaps we could have breakfast tomorrow. Well, that might work. How do I get in oh, touch with okay, you? Uh, here, my, my cell is on here. Oh, great. Thanks. And, and we'll leave your name at the door for the reception afterwards. They'll be expecting us back at the house. Oh, so then you won't be able to stay. No, but breakfast will probably work. Oh, that, that's great. Huh? That, then we can really talk. I'll catch up. Yes, Lewis? That'll be great. Oh, so I, I'll see you. I mean, we'll see you tomorrow, huh? <laughs> I, I, I think they do a great brunch at the hotel. Mm. <laughs> Come on, Lewis. It's not how it looks. That's good. It's good that it's not how it looks. There were circumstances. I mean, if it were how it looks. His mother, she couldn't handle it. And she's been gone how long? And, 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 and I guess a, a pattern was established. A pattern? About the level of... Of... Okay. Yes. later. You've got a speech to give. There are no guarantees in life. <laughs> Like your pancake? Uh huh. How do you know if you like them if you don't eat them? I'm going to. Your dad used to say, I need to test that and make sure it's not poisonous. <laughs> and that's how we need everything. Are you going to eat them? Yep. Now? In a minute. Okay. What are you doing? Googling. If you don't want them right now, I could Mom, warm them. Mom, I'm going to eat them. 
Because if not, when you want to eat them, I guess not. Oh, wait. How are they? Magnificent. Did you see that they're happy pancakes? Yes. <laughs> the blueberries are. Their smiley faces, see? Yep. <laughs> hey, did you know that babies are born with the ability to smile? Even blind babies do it. Isn't that so messed up? That's very interesting, yes. Do you remember when I used to make them for you? Yes. That one's happy. That one's laughing. And the one on the side's just thinking because I messed up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you really shouldn't make things with faces on them. It stunts my adulthood. It doesn't. No, it doesn't. I, I like doing things like that for you. So, what are you going to do today? Do you want me to lie and tell you things like dream journaling or Pilates, or do you want me to tell you the truth? You can always be honest with me. I am going to take over the world! <laughs> is it storm? I guess so. Oh. How are you going to take over the world? Oh, well, after careful research, I have narrowed it down to a few approaches. I'm either going to convince myself and the world that I'm the Antichrist, or genetically manufacture a new race of vengeful dragons that only respond to me, or create a nuclear winter, or use mind control to make everybody in the world really scared of spatulas, and then seize all the spatulas. <laughs> These are just ideas. Do you need day quill? No, I'm just choking on my evil laugh. That's because you're not evil. Or am I? Well, how are you? That's very interesting, honey. How did you come up with these ideas? The internet. The internet tells people how to take over the world? Uh, yeah, the internet tells us everything. Remember I showed you Google? No, I don't like computers. Mom, you have no excuse. The Pope tweets. He? Ask me a question. Ask me anything. I will look it up. What is your father doing right now? <laughs> Ask me another question. Are an Inuit and an Eskimo the same thing? That's seriously your question. I'm curious. I've always wondered. Okay. So in Alaska, the term Eskimo is commonly used because it includes both Yupik and Inupiat, while Inuit is not accepted as a collective term or even specifically used for Inupiat, who technically are Inuit. And there you go. <laughs> yeah, sort of. It's too much information. It's not helpful. <laughs> Your grandmother would never tell me what she put in her pancakes that made them so good. This is what it is to be a daughter, Marcy. It's trying and trying and trying to be your mother. Is it? It's not. Isn't it trying to not be your mother, but then eventually being your mother? Why do you want to take over the world? I have my reasons. Like? Because the idea of making an entire civilization afraid of spatulas amuses me. And because I don't like malls. And, and I want to rid the world of, of passive aggression and, and managers named Meredith. And, and because the health care is undistributed and, and the wealth is undistributed. And why is it fair that some planes crash and some planes don't? How, how is that fair to the people on the planes? And because I don't like my eyes. And because I really want to be Maggie Gyllenhaal. And, and I'm not. And because, because I, I want to rid the world of, of everything. And, and because there should be no such thing as pickles. They're, they're always getting your fries wet. They should just wrap them individually. And, and I am sick of feeling so freaking powerless. And, and I want control. Does this have anything to do with you losing your job? You think? You'll find another job. That's not the point. They didn't appreciate you there. It's a stupid job. It's not about the job. It's not the point. Well, then I don't understand. Because I don't know what I want to do <laughs> with my life. 
if I knew what I wanted to do, I would just do that and, and get behind that. But I, I don't know what that is. So any job is just biding time. Until what? Death or I take over the world. I shouldn't have let you give up the violin. That also not the point. I'm not good at anything either. I didn't say I wasn't good at anything. I said I don't know what I want to do with my life. I'm sorry you're sad. I am unemployed. I'm living with my mother, and I have to ask you to buy me shampoo. I've surpassed that. Well, I think it's kind of a silly idea taking over the world. I just, I just need to do something, okay? Just let me pretend to do something. Huh, you can buy grenades on Amazon. <laughs> this isn't like you. You're not a leader, honey. You're a follower like me. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Oh, I gotta hate when you say things like that. It's not true, but if, if you keep telling me that, it's going to be. <laughs> so, your grandmother, her pancakes, she would never tell me what was in them, the secret ingredient. And then finally she told me it was sweetened condensed milk that she put in them. And now I always put sweetened condensed milk in my pancakes. And that is why Dad left you. <laughs> what? We should get a dog. It's, what, what is why your father Because, left. Mom, I am sorry. You never say anything. You say things and you say things, but you're never really saying anything. What am I supposed to say? Anything. Say anything other than nothing. I just don't know enough about the world, Marcy. I'm not like your father. I'm not sharp. There's too much to know. No, you could know more. You just don't think that you can. And I'm sorry, that is pathetic. Marcy. Diane. Please. Don't call me Diane. Please call me Mom. I'm sorry, Mom. I'm sorry. I'm your mother. Hang on. I'm sorry. How do you ask your questions? Um, you have to type in this box right here. Uh, I guess I was wondering the other day. I, I was wondering the azalea bushes, and I was wondering, what exactly is photosynthesis? I mean, I, I remember from school, but I couldn't remember exactly. Photosynthesis is a chemical process that converts carbon dioxide into organic compounds, especially sugars, using the energy from sunlight. If I click on this, it will tell me about that? Uh, yeah. You want to help me take over the world? Maybe after breakfast. <laughs> Time to
to take a picture I'll remember someday all the chances Seriously, can we go now, please? Baby, baby, oh. can't we just like hang out for like a little longer, huh? It's Sheila's birthday. Oh, seriously? Okay? I don't want to go. Sweetie, yet. it's 1.45 in the morning and I got to work tomorrow. I, I mean, today, I, I have to be at work in like six hours. Six. Yeah, me too. What class? Mm. I have class tomorrow yeah. or today or whatever. Uh -huh, yeah, yeah, at three. In the afternoon, and, and it's an art class, by the way, which is like painting and pottery and, and, and that sort of deal. It's basically crafts, like what kids do. Hey, man. What's up? Nothing's up, dude. I'm having a private conversation with my girlfriend. Why? That's cool. Yeah, thanks for the endorsement there. She's pretty. Baby, come on. Let's go. No, no, no. Hold on. He stopped us. Let's see what he wants. So? Hungry, bro. That's all. Can you help me brother out tonight? Uh, it's cold being yeah, out here. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm, an only, I'm an only child, so first things first. We're not brothers. You got that? Bro. What? That's cool. Okay, that's cool. Anyway, can you help me out a bit? Anything you can spare. You know what I mean? No. What? You people always want something, so it's impossible to keep up. So what do you want? What? Tell me. Some bread, man. You know, yeah. that money. Oh. Come on, just some change. Yeah, just some change. Because we must have cash, right? And we're young and white and all that shit, so we must be rich. Clark, please. Oh, oh sorry. Yeah, my girlfriend's cold, so I can't really get into it with you right now like I was gonna, but... Hey. This is your lucky night. I'm gonna teach you the value of money. Uh, or in your case, food stamps. Baby, 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 stop. What are you doing? Just giving this dude a job. Um, what? I'm offering this gentleman the chance to earn a living wage. And learn a little bit about capitalism, too, while he's at it. Yeah, well, I'm standing here freezing. Hey, hey, hang on a second. Hey, Denzel, come over here a sec. How about a little wager? What you mean? Here. My two hands. There's money in there. One dollar. That's at least a chicken leg at KFC. <gasps> Maybe even a slice of watermelon. <gasps> you want it? Well, hell yeah. Good. But you gotta earn it first, okay? Easy. Whatever, man. Just hey, give me. Hey, 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 hold on there. And, and don't you go touching me either. You're dirty. Clark. Don't. Oh my god. What? Why, why are you, you would you just stop this? it, please? It's not racist. It's a fact. I mean, look at him. I'd say it to anybody. It's not a black thing, it's a soap thing. The man's filthy. You know what? Maybe, maybe I'll just go. <laughs> Where? You didn't even bring a purse. Don't think I didn't notice. So, uh, I'm the money guy tonight. Hey, now this dude wants some for free, just because he's so uh, <laughs> great or something. And so, so fine. I'm giving him a chance to have some, do you mind? I mean, can, can you just wait just a few minutes without complaining just once in our entire dating life? Clark! Oh. Don't talk to okay, me. Okay, okay, here. Got it. Aww. There. All right. Better? Yeah. Okay, can I get on with this now, please? Yes, yes, please. Yeah, thank go. you. <sighs> Women, huh? <laughs> okay, now, you pick the hand it's in, and the money's yours. Okay? However, you get it wrong, and I get to punch you what? one time no. anywhere I what want. What the fuck? Hold on now, hold on now. I'm not right doing now. anything. I am suggesting a bet. If anything happens, it's because this guy goes for it. If you got the guts, go ahead. Ooh. What's it gonna be, Denzel? You in or out? Stop calling him that. How do I know that's not his name? I mean, they like names like that. <laughs> okay, what is it then? Keyshawn? Julius? Magic. Clark, 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 now you're just It's Clark, me. just like you, man. Oh, bullshit, it is not. It's true, I was born Clark Jackson. Oh, okay. At least you got a classic last name. I was going to say, please, please do it. just go? Can we just give the guy some money? No. And let's, let's just go home. No, no, no. Old Clark and me are going to finish this first. 
So you ready to try? Or are you a coward too on top of being a fucking beggar? Hmm? Fine, I'll try. Good. the same guy I met at that wine bar. <laughs> I don't get it, but I'm definitely aware of it. Now, I need you to suck it up, okay? And, and, and be the guy that I fell for. Just turn away from this. I'm telling you now. I'm telling you. I'm out of here. Oh, yeah. If I have to walk all the way back to Fulton Street on my own, I will. Okay? And that will be the absolute end of us. I, I'm deadly serious. I'm serious. We are done. If you don't follow me out of here right now, it's up to you. It's up to you, Clark. Be a real man here. Be someone that I'm proud of, okay? Or keep being the asshole that you're working so hard at tonight. That Cancun is off. Oh, come on. No way am I going to a foreign country with you. No, stop. Not until you've taken a few anger management classes. Or maybe even a racial sensitivity thingy. Or seminar, mm. or whatever. I'm just not really feeling safe around you anymore. So, <laughs> prove me wrong, or I walk away now. I mean it, Clark. Now. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> this is bullshit. I mean, you're, you're not you're not gonna walk all the way to Fulton Street. And <laughs> it's just. <laughs> oh, well, I guess that's my answer. Oh. <laughs> You were being such a bastard to me. Oh. Fine, fine. You know what? I've wanted to break up with you for a while oh, now. Yeah. yeah, I have. Mm -hmm. And this is the perfect excuse. I don't even need one for a freak like you. Oh. But fine, you want one, then you got one. So that is it. And I am done with you. I, I am. No. I am done. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Do you? I'm done. Goodbye. Oh, come on, would you? Now look what you've done. I'll deal with you. 
you in a second. Mandy! Mandy! You, buddy? Now you're gonna get it. Get what? Duh! Your money! <laughs> Thanks! You done good, my man! <laughs> Pleasure, bro! No kidding! Do you know how hard she was making it to break up with her? Damn! I was having to be such a dickwad! It's exhausting! <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I know how girls can be. <laughs> Not enough to have laughs and get a pizza and like make out on a semi-regular basis. <laughs> Who doesn't want that? I do. All guys do. Sounds good to me. Yeah, but not girl. They want all that other. <laughs> I mean, some gals just don't ever get the picture. I mean, no matter how many signals you fire up there into the night sky, two, three dozen, doesn't matter. They just do not get it. Yeah, especially the beautiful one. I said, yeah, okay, you're great looking and all that, but you still don't shut up at night, you, you, you still like bad movies, and, and you still leave your shit all over the house. <laughs> I don't know, man, I, I just do not know. Girls, girls are weird. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> uh, hey, I, I thought we said 60 when we talked about it earlier. Did we? Yeah, you, you said 60 plus anything I want off you during the pet. Well, it was you who said it, bro, not me. Okay, then, bro. 60 it is. Hey. Want to play for it? <laughs> Double or nothing. <laughs> nah. Huh. I'm good. Okay, you're lost. <laughs> oh, here, let, um, let me help you back into your chair. It's the least I could do. But... Ready? So, uh, so what, you out of here now or what? Yep. Probably gonna buy me a room, watch the game. The Knicks are in town, so anyway, freezing my butt off. Yeah, no kidding. And I lost a jacket and all this, too. Calvin Klein. Huh. Work it, I suppose. Be seeing you. Gotta go. Yeah. Oh, freezing my butt off. Uh, and I'm, I'm not being rude or anything here, but uh, you being... You know, handicapped, totally helped out with the sympathy card. <laughs> Thanks again, man. I couldn't have done it without you. And seriously, I tried. <laughs> hey, you, you want to go grab a meal or something? I know it's late, but no, 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 this is... No, 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 that, that's okay. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go back in that bar. There's a couple cute girls in there. going to check them out. You white boys never learn. <laughs> that's true. We never do. But... Keep on trying, so that's something, right? Amen to that, brother. <laughs> Amen to that. So? Uh, what? How did it go? Oh, uh, hold it, Dad. I, I just want to know how the interview went. Oh, it, it went okay. Did, did your hearing aids bother you during the interview? Uh, no. Battery let you down or something? No, they're fine. Yeah, so why are you fussing with them now? What? I, I'm just asking if you had to adjust your hearing aids during the interview. Oh, no. You didn't? 
No, but you were fussing with them now. I was just putting them back in. Why? What? Why, why were you putting them back in? So I can hear you, Dad? I see. Wait a minute. Were you wearing them during the interview? I'm asking you a question, Kenny. What? Were you wearing your hearing aids during the interview? No. What? Hard of hearing or something, Dad? Why, why weren't you wearing them? I didn't want to. You chose not to wear your hearing aids during a crucial personal interview for one of the finest colleges in the country? Right. Why? What? You heard me, Kenny. I'm asking you why you didn't wear your aids. Because I wanted to come across without them. Come across? What do you mean, come across? Be myself. Oh, Kenny, my dear friend, we are talking about your future here. If they admit you there, it could make a major difference in your life afterwards. I know that, Dad, but I had to see if I could do it. And did you? I, I did okay. After all, it was just one-on-one, -on -one, she and me in our office, nobody interrupting, no extra chatter echoing around the room, and I kind of knew the drill, so I could really concentrate and read her lips and see her expressions and all that stuff. Well, I notice you're wearing them now quick enough. Well, yes, Dad, because you're driving the car and looking at the road, and I can't read your whole face when you're talking. Fair enough. The, the, the point is, the interview went well. It went okay. She, she must have known you were hard of hearing. Why do you say that? Oh, I mean, your guidance counselor at school must have sent on the information. No. No? I asked him not to. You, you asked your school guidance counselor not to send out the information about your handicap? Yes. Not to any of the colleges you applied to? Right. Oh, Kenny, for God's sake, why? Because I don't want to be a special case. Oh, Kenny. I've got good SATs. I've got good references for my summer job. And yeah, I was... working with disabled kids, I might add. So what? And I was runner-up to the interscholastic <sighs> high hurdles last year. So the colleges can judge me on all that stuff. Do well, you plan to wear your hearing aids when you get to college? At times and places of my own choosing, oh. Dad. But I don't want to get accepted just because they feel sorry for me and think I'm some disadvantaged deaf kid who needs special care. Well, so be it. It's your life. Besides, it sounds like you got away with it anyway. What do you mean? Well, you said the interview went well. I said it went okay. Just okay? Up to a point. Yeah, okay, I'm, I'm pulling over to the side here. What point? Well, towards the end of the interview, we both got slightly off track. Go on. It was weird, actually. She was talking about the summer reading requirement, mm -hmm. which happened to be Tinker Taylor's Soldier Spy, and I thought she was talking about my senior science project at school. How could that happen? I, I, I think we got our signals crossed on the word mole. Mole? There are moles in chemistry measurement, Dad, and there are moles in the British Secret Service. Oh, so, so you misunderstood each other. We got all tangled up. Yeah, so what did you do? I got up and left. You walked out? I had to, Dad. Oh. I, I mean, I was polite and I shook hands and I said thank you and all that stuff, but I had to leave. I knew we were in trouble and it could get worse, so I got out while the get-in was good. She must have thought you were nuts. I don't know what she thought. Well, you, you could have said excuse me, but I'm hard of hearing. I didn't want to say that. Well, sir, I, I, I'm sorry, but I'm, I'm going to have to do something about this. Dad, no! Uh, I'm sorry, Kenny, I have to. Your future is on the line here. Uh, may, may I have the admissions office, please? Please, Dad. What was the name of the woman who interviewed you? I won't tell you, Dad. Hello, uh, this is Howard Klein. My son, Kenneth, was just there for an interview. May I speak to whomever interviewed him, please? Uh, Ms. Novak, thank you. I can't stand this, Dad. Would you just let us? Uh, hello, Ms. Novak. Uh, I'm the, the father of Kenneth, whom you just interviewed. 
Yes, he, he told me. He, he, he's embarrassed about that, and, and I'll tell you why. He's very hard of hearing, Ms. Novak, and he didn't want you to know. He's a bright, wonderful boy and, and sweet athlete, but I think you should know that... Well, what? Uh, uh, yeah, yes, uh, uh, okay, uh, okay, hold on, I'll, I'll see if I can arrange that. Kenny, Kenny! She wants to speak with you. Why? Who knows? Come on, hurry, she's waiting. What did she say? She said she could tell I was deaf all along. Does that upset you? Yeah. No. Good. You know how she could tell? How? She said I, I leaned toward her and everything she said and my whole face responded actively. That's true enough. It sounds like you. And she said, are you sure you want to hear this, Dad? Of course I do. She said that when I talked, I was equally expressive as if I was reaching out to her in a special way or something like that. Oh, sounds like a lovely lady. She said that if more candidates could speak that passionately and listen that intensely, then her job would be a lot easier. Oh. Wow. Oh, my. Sounds like you nailed the interview, Kenny. <laughs> I guess I did. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get home. <laughs> oh, your mother's going to be thrilled to hear this. <laughs> Miss Novak said something else too, Dad. I'm all ears. She said that if I decide to come there next year, then I might consider majoring in drama. <laughs> drama? Why drama? She said that all the best actors speak intensely and listen intensely as if their lives depended on it. And that's what I did in my interview, so <laughs> I should try acting. <laughs> well, when you get to college next fall, you can tell Ms. Novak, or, or better yet, the dean, that you plan to concentrate intensely on chemistry rather than drama, and that you'll need to sit in the front row and, and probably have to record the lectures besides. May I assume you'll do that? Maybe. What? Keep your eyes on the road, Dad. Oh, God! Okay. No, I haven't done anything yet. What? I haven't... I Wait, are you... You're not... Um, I was just saying hi. I've seen you here a few times before. 
Oh. I come here most afternoons with my lunch. Right, you're the one in the wheelchair. <coughs> oh my God. No, no, you're very perceptive. Yes, I am the one in the wheelchair. No, I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry. I, I didn't mean that. No, I, I thought you were one of Goose Friends or whatever. Goose Friends? You know, friends of the Geese or whatever. They're nuts. They post people in city parks all across the city, and then when they see us collecting the geese, or they send like a text message or whatever, and all these protesters show up. And I mean, anyway, it happened to me last month. All these people show up, they start chanting Goose Stalin over and over, which I mean, it doesn't even make any sense if you think about it. I'm because sorry, I, collecting them? Why, why are you collecting them? Oh, it's a new ordinance. The population's really exploded over the past few years, and it's a danger to airplanes. Geese get stuck in the engines. So what are you going to do with them? <laughs> well, I, you know, we, I mean, it's not me, right? It's the city. They, but we do it very humanely. You know, it, it really is, you know, humane. Just hold them down and cut the head right off. It's, okay, yeah, that didn't really sound humane, did it? But I, I just, really, it's, it's just my job. Oh. Yeah. Look, could, could you skip this park? Um, I mean, I'm not crazy or anything. Sure. I just, you know, I'm going to be honest. I have had a really bad week, and, and I really like coming here, you know? I, I beam the pieces of my sandwich, and I watch this family that hatched about five weeks ago grow up, and I just, yeah, how about you skip this park? Yeah, I'm, I, I, I really can't do that. I mean, I've only had the job, like, six months. I mean, I, I'm real sorry, miss. Oh, it's Melanie, what, what was your name? Oh, it, uh, Ben. It's Ben. Ben. I don't mean to sound unreasonable, but um, stay away from these geese, okay? Yeah, okay, miss. Uh, yeah, miss, I'm gonna need you to stop that, all right? Ow! Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Jesus, all right, just, just leave me alone, all right? I'm not a jerk. You know that ramp on the other side of the park? That was my suggestion. I did you a favor. Uh, excuse me? No, I'm, I'm saying the ramp, the, the wheelchair ramp on the other side of the park, the, the ramp for people like you, for wheelchair people. I mean, I, I don't mean wheelchair people. I, I was in a cast for six months in junior high, so I know what it's... Look, I'm a good person, all right? I think all the parks should be accessible for people with physical, you know, people who aren't normal. Not that you're not normal. I'm saying I've made them install that ramp, and I'm a Democrat, and I don't know why I said that, but <laughs> what I'm saying is I'm not prejudiced, right? I think disabilities are really awesome and the American experience and I don't know why I'm still talking. Okay, I wasn't gonna make this into a big thing, but now I am making this into a big fucking thing. No, wait, I'm I didn't... gonna call those goose friends people or whatever. Oh, God. If you even touch one of those geese, I'm gonna become their spokeswoman. I'm gonna start a letter running campaign, I'm gonna go on TV, and I'm in a wheelchair, so people feel obligated to agree with me. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, watch. Excuse me? Yeah? Hi, come here. This guy here, he's gonna kill all the geese. Okay. He's going to kill all the geese. Isn't that horrible? <laughs> Yeah? He's like the Goose Stalin. <laughs> well, that doesn't really Shindy. make... Yes, he is! Yeah. That's it, thanks. Bye. Well? Look, I, I need this job, right? If I don't come back with at least a dozen geese, they're not yeah. gonna... Okay, well, maybe next time you should get a job where you don't have to commit genocide. Genocide? What are you... T Wait a minute. What kind of sandwich is that? This is not about me. Are you not even a vegetarian? I've considered it. <laughs> Chicken salad! Chicken salad! Okay, okay. You give this to geese, you feed them their cousins. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> That's not about me. But where do you think this meat comes from? I mean, they torture these birds. They inject them with hormones. I buy organic, mostly. Oh, come on, you're a hypocrite. Just let me do my job. I have watched these geese grow up. I'm like their mother. You're an idiot. You're an idiot. Excuse but me. But why don't you spend your energy on some worthwhile cause? Oh, like building ramps? Yeah, like building ramps. I'm a good citizen. Hey, guys. Oh, thank you very much. You're like the Martin Luther King of people with wheelchairs. You're welcome. Excuse us. What? Hi. We've been over there in the playground with our kids. See, they're right over there. They wanted us to come over here and tell you you're being loud and immature. <laughs> yeah, and they're four and six. 
Oh. Yeah, and also, all those geese flew away at least three minutes ago. Oh, God damn it! Look, we've seen you in here every afternoon this week trying to get this done. Maybe this isn't the job for you? Wait, you've been here all week? Oh, last five or six days at least. He obviously doesn't want to hurt them. He just comes out here and stares at them. You stare at them? No, that's not... He stares at them with these big, sad eyes. Oh, seriously? Yeah, yeah it's, it's sweet. And a little sad. Mostly sad. Okay, thanks. You know, that's enough. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Enjoy this. I'm hot and tired and hungry and hey, you can split my sandwich. Oh. <laughs> What's wrong with us? You know? We care so much about these geese, and yet we're fine sitting here eating chicken. <laughs> yeah. I actually don't care about the geese. You don't? No, not really. I mean, the ducklings are really cute or whatever, but then they grow up and they're aggressive and they shit everywhere, and I just, you know, the first thing that you said to me was about my wheelchair, and then you started talking about that stupid ramp. No, I know, I'm I just, an idiot. I... You know, can't I just have an argument about geese? Can't I have one argument that doesn't revolve around my wheelchair? Can't I just have a shining match about geese? Um, I've had a really bad week. Yeah, um, me too. You know, I, I actually really did appreciate that ramp on the north end of the park. Thank you for suggesting that. Yeah, I was sort of lying about that. I, they've been planning that for years. <laughs> Sure. Just one of those things, one of those things, just